presentation, and you have two minutes each. Uh, good morning, Chair. Well, good afternoon, Chair McGuire yeah, and, uh, and members. Um, thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts about SB 598. My name is Mark Jaffe, and I'm a senior policy analyst at Reason Foundation. Before becoming a policy analyst, I held a variety of management roles in the field of credit risk information technology at two investment banks and at Moody's Analytics. Six years ago, the State Treasurer's Office commissioned myself and a co-author to study the feasibility of creating a quantitative model for assessing California city credit risk. We were hired in the aftermath of a string of Chapter 9 bankruptcies and bond defaults by cities such as Stockton and San Bernardino. One goal of this investigation was to determine whether the state could create an early warning system for local government fiscal distress. Our clients at CityAC asked us to consider using the state controller's city's annual report data for this purpose. But when I reviewed the data, I found large discrepancies with audited financial statements prepared by the cities. These financial reports, known as CAPRs, are prepared to satisfy municipal bond market disclosure requirements and federal single audit requirements and are published exclusively in PDF format. So rather than use the city's annual report data, we undertook the, da the daunting task of locating CAFRs and hand entering their data into a spreadsheet. It was then that I realized the importance of the reform proposed in SB 598. If it was possible to automatically load data from CAFRs into financial models, it would be much easier to effectively monitor local government fiscal health. The sort of this sort of monitoring is useful for municipal bond analysis as well as state oversight. In the absence of timely, high-quality financial data, municipal bond investors are compelled to rely on credit rating agencies and or their own biases when assessing credit risk. Academic research finds that rating agencies are harsher in their analysis of municipal credit than of corporate or asset-backed credit. Meanwhile, a trickle of high-profile municipal bankruptcies, such as those in Detroit and Puerto Rico, reinforce largely unfounded fears that most municipalities are not creditworthy, potentially raising the cost of capital for crucial infrastructure projects. So there is no substitute for hard, accurate numbers. Investors in corporate securities have nearly real-time access to issuer financial statement data because the SEC has mandated that annual and quarterly reports be delivered in machine-readable form. No one in the corporate securities market is hand-entering balance sheet and income statement data from PDFs nor should anyone in the municipal bond market. Returning to the issue of state oversight, much has changed since our 2013 project, but the core problem remains. At the State Controller's Office, the city's annual report has been replaced by the very modern By the Numbers website. State law was also modified to give cities more time to enter their financial data so that completed CAFRs could be consulted during the SCO submission process. Unfortunately, discrepancies between By the Numbers and CAFR data remain. Further, by the numbers is only available on a delayed basis. State law requires SCO to publish the data 16 months after the end of the fiscal year, but many government financial statements are available within just six months of the end of the fiscal year. SB 598 offers a modern solution to the challenge of monitoring local government health. You have 30 Not seconds. only cities, counties, but various categories of special purpose governments as, as well. It will allow the state auditor, other state agencies, policy researchers, and concerned citizens to more quickly identify at-risk governments, permitting interventions that might prevent the loss of vital community services. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment.